out here. Uh, we have the carrier to launch. We can move the carrier around different places. Uh, we have uh, a lot of flexibility in that uh, we've got all types of aircraft co-located right here in the air wing. Uh, for different types of missions, we can pull uh, people together in one spot, get them all briefed up within a couple of hours and get on the way. I'm sure that some, sometimes very difficult because you have different aircraft bases in different places. The coordination out here, uh, in many cases, is much easier because we have everybody here within a thousand feet on the carrier and we can pull it all together and, and get over there in a hurry. When it pulls out of port, they full up airfield, full up round, ready to not only defend itself, but ultimately, and its primary mission is to, to project power. Uh, all the ordnance is there, it doesn't have to be shipped over. All the aircraft are there, all the air crew, all the fuel, everything required to uh, project power at a moment's notice. air wing on a carrier is around 60 aircraft, uh, it's made up of a, a couple of F-14 squadrons, a couple of F-18 squadrons, uh, one A-6, a couple of carriers have two A-6 squadrons on them, uh, an EA-6B squadron, an E-2 squadron, and an S-3 squadron, and then the, uh, the SH-3 uh, ELO squadron. The mission of the F-14 is uh, it's the Navy's premier fighter, primarily it, it's fighter first and uh, provides uh, air superiority and fleet air defense for uh, the carrier battle group. The principal mission for the F-18 is power projection ashore. Uh, we are, we, we train equally to the, the fighter mission and the air to ground mission, but I'd say our major emphasis would be uh, dropping bombs and the air to air would come in in more of a self-escort role uh, to where we don't have to have a uh, slew of fighters going in with us. We can take care of ourselves basically. All right, it's a two-place, obviously, side-by-side, -side, uh, all-weather attack aircraft carry uh, roughly eight tons of ordnance, which is a, is a good bit more than some other aircraft in theater. The airborne controllers are all in the uh, E-2C, the uh, Hawkeye, and uh, those, those guys are in the F-14, F-18 guys all work together fairly closely for, uh, for the uh, air defense role. The EA-6B Prowler is a uh, jamming platform. Uh, it provides uh, some uh, electronic surveillance and some uh, electronic uh, jamming of, of, of different frequency bands. The SH-3 on the ship is kind of a jack of all trades. His, his primary mission was anti-submarine. It's our SAR platform. If anybody goes down, the, uh, the SH-3 is probably going to be who's going to pick you up. I picked S3s uh, out of the training command. It's like a chess game. You go out there and you look for an enemy submarine, and there's a lot of satisfaction going out there and finding the guy submerged and tracking him, having the ability to, should he become a threat, to, to take him out should, should that need arise at any given time. The, the A-6 is an all-weather bomber. It's the only one that the Navy owns. So we, we can fly uh, in, in the rain. Uh, we fly mostly at night. And the cloud cover really doesn't affect us that much. We need, uh, uh, we use our radar to, to target you know, in the target area. And so it doesn't hurt us that badly. We can be a little more accurate if we can use our, uh, our FLIR uh, for detection and ranging. Uh, we, can, we can be a little bit more accurate. But, but the weather really doesn't affect us that much. Uh, the weather only hurts us getting our strike groups together. The A-6 also flies the tanker mission uh, on occasion. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of activity and you have to, you know, follow up, play around. If he's getting to be a low state after he's had a few approaches, and uh, you have to position yourself almost perfectly so that if he bolters again, then he can look up and go right where, you know, he's expecting to be. We set the 1 to 2 o'clock position. Tanking can be, uh, <laughs> this, is one, this is one of those things where once you get good at it, uh, we we like to kind of press the bubble and, and see how quickly we can get in the basket and uh, with how much flare we can do it. Uh, 
But it, let's say you've had a 14-day lay layover in Palma, Palma, Spain, and you haven't uh, touched the stick, and now you're back in the cockpit again. It, it can be a, a flail wreck, you know, snakes in the cockpit, and you're you're trying to get in and out of the basket. And you know all your buddies are watching you out there, hanging off the, the A6's wing, and they're laughing because you can't get in the basket. But normally it's uh, normally it's a pretty easy evolution, and we you know we kind of enjoy it. Great airplane. It's very capable. It's still very capable. 